This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skin. What is going on, you guys? It is the Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. Man, it has been an absolutely crazy few weeks. Between the interview with David Bombal getting tons and tons of views, all the BLE spam we've been doing, this channel's been absolutely blowing up. I can't thank you guys enough. Now, if you've been in my Discord, you've probably heard me talking about this ransomware script that InfoSec Red set up for me. It's a really cool little script he made. Basically, it allows you to run a full-on ransomware attack using just a Flipper Zero. Now, Red originally made this basically so I could show it off during my interview with David Bomble. We did a bunch of cool stuff and it's broken up into four different videos, but that video hasn't been released yet. Well, I've got ADHD in the attention span of a five-year-old, so I just couldn't wait to show you guys. Now, this is just another great example of what the community has been doing for Flipper Zero. Again, I say over and over again, without the community, Flipper Zero would be nothing. Well, that's enough intro for me. This one is going to be crazy. Buckle up. Let's get at it. All right, so first of all, up top, disclaimer. I know there was a disclaimer in the beginning, but this cannot be said enough. Only test your own equipment. Running something like ransomware on a computer you're not allowed to access is incredibly illegal. It's for this reason, just like the keylogger, this will not be accessible to anyone. I'm not kidding. I'm also gonna do a better job of blurring everything out just to make sure that there's no chance of this escaping. Why am I so serious about it? Honestly, if this gets out, it's gonna end up with some dumb kid in high school getting arrested. Like, I promise you, someone will get it, they'll run it on their teacher's computer, and then that's it. Game over. Because also, keep in mind, what I'm not showing you is the decryptor script itself. Without the decryptor script, you do not pass go, you do not collect $200, you are screwed. All right, so with that out of the way, let's take a look at it and I can kind of give you the lay of the land. So let's pop on down to desktop and see how it works. All right, so here we are. I'll open it up right here and just as before, it's got a web hook that goes to my personal private Discord server and it's got the actual payload here that is encoded in Base64. Now the beauty of the Base64 encoding is that Defender and even other programs like CloudStrike do not detect this thing running when it's encoded in Base64. Furthermore, we're also gonna be using Discord as a way of getting our decryption key. What's nice about using Discord is that it looks like traditional user workflow. So none of those antiviruses or you know any of those protection suites, they don't really view this as anything malicious. That's why when we were loading the file grabber and the keylogger, we used Discord for exfiltrate on both of those because again, it looks like normal user traffic. So let me go ahead and close this and I'll give you kind of a once over on what's gonna happen. So we have a normal desktop here. We have some links to some applications, some documents, some text documents, PDFs, images, all sorts of normal stuff. Let's open up, we've got a manifest.txt. If you don't know, this is basically the file that Flipper uses to figure out which animation it wants to play. This is one of my custom manifests that I load up on my Flipper just for, you know, to have all my own animations. But that's kind of what manifest.txt looks like right now. But after we run this, it's gonna look totally different. All right, so I can't really show you on the screen me loading the script on Flipper because as soon as you load up bad keyboard or bad USB, it cuts out on QFlipper. But Basically, I've got bad keyboard here. I'll load that up, scroll down, and now we have Red's P Ransom right there. So we're gonna go ahead and run this on our PC. All right, let's get ready to run this. So this version is, it's, I mean, it's always scary running stuff like this on your own computer. Uh, this version is kind of the watered down version. It's only gonna affect my desktop. The real version of this will hit my documents, downloads, pictures, I mean, everything. So it's kind of nasty. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the run button and let's see what this does. Bam, all right, give it a second. And then it's gonna immediately open up PowerShell up top. And then it's going to load this. You can see the web hook, which is blurred out. And then a lot more blurred out stuff behind it or underneath it. And yeah, this is basically the encoded version of this payload. So if we give it a second, it'll run through all this and we'll see what happens at the end. <laughs> All right, we just finished up, and as soon as it was done, and it always popped up on the wrong screen. There we go. Hello, I want to play a game. It's got kind of a little bit of a saw vibe. I love how this works. It says subscribe to Talking Sasquatch. 
follow InfoSec Red on GitHub. But yeah, basically, it's this is your ransom note. So if you were actually using this as real ransomware, this is basically how you tell people, you know, how to contact you to get the information to decrypt it. Uh, also notice this doesn't close. Well, it does, but it comes right back. So yeah, we're we're pretty much in rough shape right now. Now you'll notice all of our stuff over here has been renamed to ENC. So those are all encrypted files. Those are completely off limits right now. They're, um, yeah, they're encrypted with a 256-bit AES key, uh, making it not very easy to get these things decrypted. So I just showed you the manifest.txt that we use on our flipper. Let's open it up now in Notepad and let's see what it looks like now. Whoa. Yeah, that's definitely not what we saw last time. I have a sneaking suspicion if we load this manifest into our flipper, it's not going to work at all. It's definitely quite encoded. So let's close out of that and take a look at my Discord. So yeah, it sent the decryption key over to my Discord, which is right here. So right here, that's going to be our decryption key. So now here's the fun part. If we open up Squatch right here, we have the decryptor PS1. So that's our decryptor file. That's what we're gonna to use to decrypt everything. So uh, in order to decrypt it, let's do this. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna use my cool little trick. Gonna hold shift, then right click, and then open PowerShell window here. That's the folder that I have the decryptor on. All right, so the way this works is we'll go back into our Discord, copy this, copy, go back into here. We're gonna do dot slash decryptor. I can just press tab to fill the rest of it. And then just paste in our key right there with any luck. This will decrypt everything. We're gonna run this once and hope for the best. Hey, here we go. You can see it working. And my files are back, thank God. Furthermore, you'll notice if I can find which one of these windows. Now I'm actually able to close that little ransom window, which is good there too. Again, we can go ahead and open Notepad back up. We can open up our manifest.txt and see it's all back to its original glory. So yeah, that's basically how this script works. It's really, really cool. Hey, we made it. I'm not gonna lie, every single time I run that script, which I've done like a dozen times now, I get a little bit nervous because, I mean, if something goes wrong, you could always run into a situation where you've encoded your own stuff or encrypted your own stuff and you just can't come back from it. I mean, furthermore, when I first tested this this morning, after again, having run it a bunch of times, I ran into a permission issue where I wasn't able to run the decryptor script and I, I was a little nervous for a minute. Like for real, I'd run into this before where I wasn't able to run a script because it was unsigned and I knew there was a solution for it. But at the same time, I've got all my files encrypted. I'm like, oh crap, what do I do? I need to get this video going. Oh man, it was a mess. But yeah, you can see just how powerful something like this is. One of the things is people try to make Flipper seem like a toy, but it can do a lot more than people really give it credit for. It really all comes down to the creativity and the expertise of the person using it and the person that's writing the codes and stuff for it. As I had mentioned before, InfoSec Red is an absolute mad lad. The guy can write code in Notepad just off the top of his head. I mean, being able to do that is absolutely crazy. Like, I don't claim to be a coder, but with at least like some colored markup or something, I'm completely lost. Now that's InfoSec Red's P ransomware. Now the important thing to remember is that this isn't, I mean, it could be a standalone thing, but it's actually part of a much, much larger command and control setup. If you remember from the key logger and the file grabber, we have it all set up so that there's basically a GitHub uh, command and control server. So basically all we have to do is change a couple files on GitHub and we can make your computer load any script we want to. So basically the Flipper Zero attack vector that we could use is simply run the command and control server using bad USB. As soon as that's running, we can run whatever we want in the background. And I mean, it's just crazy how powerful it is. Also remember, this will run on a bunch of other stuff, just like an OMG cable. This isn't my real OMG cable, Amelia has it, but I pretend it was, right? Or you could run it on a bash bunny or a rubber ducky. It really just goes to show you that a degree of awareness is super important when it comes to maintaining your own security. All right, and the last disclaimer of it, again, do not test anything that's not your own, that you don't have permission to work on, because again, things like this are really dangerous. And again, to reiterate, I'm not distributing this to anybody for any reason. Do not ask for it in my Discord. We will immediately tempt mute you, if not ban you outright. You've been warned. Some people said it couldn't be done. More people said it shouldn't be done, but that's Flipper Zero ransomware.
as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you want to see more videos like this, if you want to see more BLE spam, I could do an entire other video on Samsung BLE spam. So if you want to see that, hit it up a comment down below. Thanks again for watching. You guys are absolute legends. We'll catch you next time.